Hi everyone, I'm Hayley. I'm always in the craft room and I've got lots to tell you in this week's Friday Sews. So first of all, the night dresses I was working on from this fabric. We're using McCall's 6074 and it's that orange view. You guys, this is the most cobbled together project I think I've ever done. <laughs> so I had made this pattern before but I'd cut it off as a top so when I had traced it out, I had only traced as much as I needed. I hadn't traced the full dress pattern piece. Well, they're just nighties. It's only a knit fabric. I couldn't be bothered to unfold all the pattern tissue again. So I just fudged it. I just kind of guessed when I cut out. And I've now sewn up the side seam. And it's fine. I've made two exactly the same. But... Oh, I want to finish the neckline edge with a stretch lace elastic. I use it all the time to finish underwear. It's really comfortable, easy to do. I thought it would give it a nice kind of lingerie look. Can I find the piece of elastic I want to use? No, no, I cannot. When I started doing this project, I went in the elastic stash to check if I had any that matched, found some that was an absolutely perfect match, put it with the fabric, then like two weeks later I took the fabric to the house to cut it out, brought it back, put it in a pile of cut out things, you get where this is going. The stretch lace elastic is somewhere but not here, why didn't I just put it back in the box? Why didn't I just go Yes, I have what I need. I'll leave it where it lives so that when the time comes that I need it, I know where it is. That's today's lesson. I should put things back where they actually go so I can find them the next time. Anyway, they're basically done except for applying said lace. I might put some around the sleeves or I might add a cap sleeve. And going back to I can't be bothered to get this pattern tissue out again. The Itch to Stitch Idle Wide Tee, I know I've got a cap sleeve piece cut out and you know, it's a knit, it's a night dress. If I decide I want a cap sleeve, I'll just use that pattern piece. But what I think I'll probably do when I find the lace is do lace neckline, lace armholes and then sleep in one of them and see what I want to do for the second because I don't know if that sounds a bit itchy but you know, I have it in my underwear and it's not itchy, so we'll see. So that was the 90s. I also, Gold Star, did a project for my husband. Now, we've already established I wear my clothes for a very long time. In fact, I'm just looking at this card again. <laughs> I was a bit chilly, so I slipped this on and... I bought this with money from my very first Saturday job, which I got when I was 15. I'm now 41. <laughs> yeah, I really do wear my clothes for a long time, but not as long as my husband, because he brought me these. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah, he finally decided his shorts were worn out when this happened. Hi! Now, you would assume, wouldn't you, he brought these over to the craft room because in that corner is the fabric recycling box. But no, you would be wrong. He brought these over to the craft room to tell me they still have a perfectly good zip. And could I take it out and put it in a different pair of trousers where the zip has failed? Now, do any of you have partners or kids or friends who give you jobs like this? And to them, it's just like, oh, swap a zip. Little do they know. The zip is normally the first thing you put in, isn't it? It's a very early step in the construction process. It's not an easy thing to get out. It's not an easy thing to put back in. Anyway, 
I actually made him take the old zip out because I was like, oh, my poor little hands, that will hurt me. I know. <laughs> he really does. Yeah. Oh, does that have a better wife? I don't know where I was going with that. He really does put up with a lot. Anyway, he took the zip out and I've put it back in to the other pair of trousers and look, it functions. It's not the neatest thing ever because I'm not great at zips even when I've got a full set of instructions. And I will also confess, I stitched it on in navy thread because the man was wearing those shorts until last week. I don't think he's that concerned about whether his thread matches. So that is one job done. It also made me laugh because obviously I'm quite new to this whole YouTube thing. I don't know if you can tell from all the terrible editing, etc. But he was passing by the craft room one afternoon and I said, oh, oh, love, I've done those. Uh, that's it for you. Your trousers are ready. And he was like, oh, brilliant. He looked at it. He was like, lovely. Thanks very much. And he tried to take them away with him. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not until they've been on Friday so's, mate. Like, I need the credit for that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that job done. I have also been working on my Notches Patterns Odell dress. I've been talking about this for months. You're probably going to be so relieved I'm finally actually getting on with it. But here it is. I, I was obsessed with the pattern, but I didn't have any fabric in the stash. And then I bought this fabric a couple of weeks ago. And as soon as it came up pre-wash, I cut it out. And I've started on these fantastic sleeves. I wonder if you can... You can't really get an idea, can you? That's the centre front. This is one of the sleeves in construction. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about how big those sleeves are. I will say it took a lot of concentration because there's so many sleeve panels. In fact, they're here. And there's still one there pinned and they all look really similar but they are all actually different, like at the top and stuff. So, yeah, I've been very careful when I've cut them out. I've been super careful to leave everything clipped together and to mark all the notches because that's how you put it all together. And you know me and left and right. So that's why I've been working. I would normally do like one whole sleeve then the other whole sleeve but this fabric is quite similar right and wrong sides and I just wanted to be sure I was getting the right one on each side so I've done both of those both of those both of those both of those and I've just noticed my little neckline fusing has not fused completely so I'm going to gently put that on my ironing board so I can refuse that and make sure the neckline doesn't stretch out. So I'm super excited with that, it's coming on really well. Um, I am going to reveal it as part of my holiday wardrobe planning series because one of the items on my wish list was a travel dress and that is it for sure. So um, look out for that coming soon. I have been filming little vlogs like a day in the life sewing and oh, I've enjoyed it so much. It's been a real laugh, but I think you're probably all sick of hearing about my holiday now. So the next video I will do in that series, it might have already gone out when you see this because yeah, I can never get my head around what order it's all in. But anyway, I'm just going to do a big grand reveal rather than put you through any more of my ramblings, which is what I'm doing right now. So, huh, the last thing I want to show you is some new fabric purchases. So my kids have been off school a bit, we've had inset days and half term and yada, 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 and we went to the Peak District. So you know what that means? 
I googled fabric shops and I found a fabric shop I'd never heard of called Ruby's Rags in New Mills. Really cute little town um, and top tip if you've got kids with you, the library is like pretty much right next door to Ruby's shop. I don't know if she's called Ruby but anyway. Um, so my husband and the kids were super happy in the library because you know three things I love in life. Sewing, fabric, books. I'm determined to pass on at least one of them to the children and so far books is proving the most popular. So they were in the library and I got to have such a good route in the shop. It is beautiful. Now I love all fabric shops. I love like a bargain basement where they stack it high and sell them cheap and the thrill of the hunt and finding that one gem amongst all of the other like costumey fabrics but I also love a shop like this which was just pure class oh my gosh all of the fabrics were stunning I mean such good quality and of course as I want to do my eyes narrowed in on one fabric and it turned out to be the most expensive fabric in the whole shop Oops, and it is probably not going to look like much on screen, but it is the most beautiful linen, and it is a hundred percent pure linen, but it's so soft, so soft. I can't even tell you. The lady who owns the shop was almost apologetic about the cost. It was, I think, it was. 32 quid a metre-ish, which is probably the most expensive fabric I've ever bought. But she was telling me it's hand-woven in Spain by a father and son team. And you know what? How long have I been wearing this cardigan? If I wear this for as long as that, the cost per wear will be mere pence. And if I'm going to put the hours into making it, I'm going to make something lovely. I'm going to look after it and wear it for years but what should that thing be so i initially thought a shirt dress but from afar i think this reads almost gray it is blue pale blue i've done this before with a shirt dress where i've made it in a solid color and it can read a bit uniformy like maybe nursing or military, it looks a bit, not utilitarian, institutional. So I'm hesitant to do a shirt dress, even though I think that would be lovely. Then I thought maybe a Darling Rangers shirt dress because that doesn't have a collar and somehow that reduces the workwear vibe. I don't know, I don't know, but I do hope you can appreciate what a gorgeous fabric this is and also let's all be pleased my husband quickly got bored of watching me on youtube and doesn't know how much that cost the other fabric i bought was this and i think she said it was a fabric godmother which as far as i know i've never owned one of their fabrics i i generally prefer a bargain when it comes to fabrics but my skills are really improving and I'm no longer so worried about ruining fabrics I think for two reasons my skills are better and also I don't know if you've noticed but when I like a pattern I just make it again and again and again so I know it fits and I know I like it and I know I'll wear it so I'm happier to spend a little bit more I just wonder if you can hear, they are mowing the field next door. I say they, my husband is. He's, it's not really mowing, it's more like ploughing. Anyway, it's loud. I hope you can't hear it. Um, and also, it keeps raining a little bit. Ugh. Anyway, back to the fabric. So this is it. It's a rayon viscose. Rayon or viscose, they're the same thing, aren't they? I'll hold it up so you can have a proper look. I just love these colours and this 
floral, the scale of it I thought was quite unusual. It's not ditzy, but it's not large scale either. It's in between. And it's lovely and that silky smooth feeling. Looking at the weave, I have bought fabric that looks like this before and it's been called a moricane. It's not a chalet, it's not a twill. There's like ribs going sideways. Anyway, it's delightful, whatever it is. It's not a crepe either, but it feels, it's a similar weight to a viscose crepe. I'm thinking of the Georgia's Portfolio Mellow dress as the full dress. And I've previously avoided bias cut dresses because I had a ready to wear one once and it was super clingy and it just made me very self-conscious. I didn't feel like it left much to the imagination, but this is a heavier weight and it's not shiny. I think that is key for me in bias cut fabrics. Um, any kind of satin, I don't like the way the light catches it. So this is nice and matte and it's such a busy print. Anyway, what I thought was, I can do it as the dress and if it turns out I don't like it as a dress, I know I love the top. So I can just cut it off to top length and won't that look fab with my navy linen trousers? But I am gonna give the dress a try. I did think, I should try the dress in a stash fabric that I don't really like as like a wearable toile, but I know myself and by the time I've done that and I've got one, I'll just lose all enthusiasm for this fabric. I don't have much sewing time. Life is short. I'm going to cut into the good fabric. I'm very excited, but I do need to wash that first. So that's it for Friday Sews this week. I have mainly been busy with holiday sewing, um, as you will know if you've been watching this channel. Oh, I did have as well a crochet top to show you. We'll have to do it next week because I can't be bothered to go and get it. Um, but I have been working on a little crochet top, which I thought might be quite useful for my holiday. Obviously, it's me, so it's gone wrong in quite a few places. There's a whole backstory. Come back next week and <laughs> find out what it is. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye. Hi everyone. Is, do we need more lights? Oh. So I'm thinking, so why do I always say so at the beginning? Yeah, and I've just noticed, are we wonky? We've got mowing outside, we've got wonky. No, now my camera says that's wonky. Oh gosh, I'm annoying myself. Sorry, totally lost my train of thought. Oh.